Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chase on two wheels here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell. And guys, it's time. Today we are first riding the 2022 Suzuki Hayabusa, aka GSX 1300R. The last time I rode one of these, I think was a 2015 model. They have changed it up. They have added some tech. They have smoothed things out. I don't know how to feel about this motorcycle, but we will find out how I feel in a minute if I don't get hit by a car. If you guys are excited for this first ride, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you like motorcycle content. And let's get this first ride started. Here we go, Suzuki Hayabusa. Now guys, the last time I rode a Hayabusa, I did not talk fondly of it. I was very early on in my first started career at that point. I hadn't ridden a ton of motorcycles. I've ridden far more now, so I'm hopeful that this video, I can talk more educatedly about the Hayabusa. All right, let's get this tiny little kickstand back. All right, tiny mirrors. Look at these guys. Those things are not even close to as big as this motorcycle. So, Suzuki Easy Start. Yes, I love it. Okay, let's uh, let's get up to the, to the the reflective mirror. All right, guys, I'm 5'10", 32 inch inseam. I've got relatively bent legs, and I can easily flat foot on this bike. That being said, it is still a hefty boy. It is a lot of weight going back and forth. Let's see what modes we're working with. All right, B, A, U3, U2, U1, C. Okay, so I'm assuming the U modes are user defined. We won't worry about those. We'll just stick with uh, A, B, and C. C mode looks like it's the slowest, I assume. So we'll stick with C to start with. Let's go. I don't know who you are, but whoever owns this BMW, Nice job, beautiful bike. I like it very much, I wish I could have. Okay, goodbye. Before we get this first ride started, I would love to invite all of you guys to go check out our Discord page. If you are interested in motorcycles, which I imagine if you're watching this video, you are, and you want to uh, join a Discord of like-minded motorcycle enthusiasts, we would love to have you on there. Link down in the description. If you want to check that out, it's totally free. We'd love to have you over there. We do talks about first rides and motorcycles that come out builds that your people are doing on their bikes it's a cool spot all right guys 2022 suzuki hayabusa let's see what this thing is all about we are currently in what i would assume is rain mode powerful engine braking look at this whoa jesus christ that quick shifter like punched me into in the gut right there as far as what's new on this uh new model hayabusa from what I understand, Suzuki really focused on smoothing this motorcycle out and uh, just doing little slight updates to it. And it has been getting pretty good praise online to the fact that I'm very interested to be here on it because people have been talking a lot of good about this thing. I do know one thing, since we're getting red light after red light, I can go ahead and tell you guys uh, this is one of those motorcycles that it's a big bike and it feels like a big bike. We're, you know, stuck in a little more traffic than I'm used to here. Uh, getting it to go back and forth in a lane, at least at slow speed, is a lot. It's not one of those bikes that kind of hides its weight well. I mean, how could you? You're a Hayabusa. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't expect otherwise. But, you know, we've ridden some bikes recently where it's a bigger bike and, uh, 
doesn't really feel like a bigger bike this one you get you you get what you see i will say uh c mode right now we're looking kind of chill but before we get into the modes guys let's talk about uh body position so body position is kind of interesting on this bike my lower half is tucked in pretty tight if you've got longer legs you're gonna be really scrunched up from waist down but my top half is extended you guys can see my arms are reaching out you guys can probably see it much better from the camera car it's a very interesting body position i i could see a taller rider loving the top half but really hating the bottom half interestingly i've got a lot of vibration in my feet right now now i'm going to keep an eye on that as we go especially on the highway At about 4500 my feet start vibrating a lot so i'll keep an eye on that and keep you guys updated granted we got a lot of traffic but i'm kind of interested at what b mode is going to be like so we're going to shift over to b mode looks like traction control is now at five and we'll see how the power delivery is now that we changed it into b mode looks like we're on power setting two so guys one of the cool things about this bike is the technology on it you're looking at a full full technology package lift control engine braking control cornering abs abs lift control literally everything this bike has which you guys know we love that love all the rider aids especially on bigger bikes like this i'm not able to really tell a difference low in the rpms from c mode to b mode i imagine once we get on the highway there's going to be a massive difference though and keep in mind guys uh this bike has i think uh five miles on it something there other very few miles so the bike is not worn in yet it will be faster it will brake better once you wear this thing in as of right now the brakes seem to take a little a little more pull than i would have expected i kind of wish i had a bigger bite um, it's a big bike i i don't like i, I mean um, it makes sense that a bigger bike would take a little longer to actually stop for a motorcycle that's going to be going at the speeds i imagine this thing is um, I, I do wish I had slightly more bitey brakes. Checking out the dash for a second, I got to give Suzuki props. I love that I get a TFT color dash in the middle with all my regular information, and then you still give me my analog gauges. I feel like dash-wise, this might be one of the best dashes I've ever seen from a Suzuki. Very happy and content with the mixture of analog and digital here. Um, I feel like the things that need to be digital are and the things that um, can benefit from being analog are. You know, one of the things about this body position that I'm noticing, it's naturally making me put more weight on my wrists. And that's because I can't really get what I feel is a really good grip around the motorcycle with my legs. So it's hard for me to hold my weight up. Uh, and I imagine we'll, we'll see the detriment of that towards the end of this video, but right now i can feel my wrist being basically uncomfortable uh it's not a deal breaker or anything like that and you know this is very specific to my body position if you're taller than me if you're shorter than me this thing's going to feel totally different to you let's get out of this traffic so we can like actually feel this thing out god oh, there it is there's the hayabusa we all know and love all right I do gotta say, being in these kind of like city street traffic areas, these mirrors are terrible. Part of that is me knowing that I'm on a larger motorcycle, so I know that, you know, I take up more space. So I'm trying to be more cognizant around that of, of the traffic around me, but these mirrors are not helping me out. I really wish I had a better understanding of my surroundings with them, and I'm just not really getting that right now, so. Mirrors aren't that big of a deal. You can easily change mirrors out, but you know. Transmission's been good, man. We do have a quick shifter. I will have to find out if it's up and down, but so far, uh, the quick shifter has felt really good. Gears feel solid when I click into them. I do notice that it has a little spongy one. So when I get to first gear, if I press down on the shifter, it's a little spongy. I would rather have that then um you know some of these bikes just ha you just press it down and nothing happens i hate those i'll deal with these 
but I prefer for my shifter to not go down anymore once I'm in first gear. That way I know, you know, physically, you know, I'm touching it and I can tell that it's, uh, I am where I'm at. I'll take the spongy gear though. That's not bad. Overall, uh, so far with the suspension, really liking it. You know, we'll be really pushing it on the highway a little, a little harder than we are right now. We'll get a better feel for it then. And let's go. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's a little strange though. I just made that turn. The bike fell over into that turn far faster than I would have expected it to. That's surprising. I would not have expected that. Okay. So guys, whenever you are at, whenever you have pressure on that quick shifter, it feels even better. So now we're actually going somewhere. And when I shift up, let's see if we can shift down. Oh, yes, we can. Up and down quick shifter, baby. That is what I'm here for. That's what we want to see. Look at me not hating a Hayabusa. What is happening? And we haven't even got to the highway yet. Speaking of the highway, we are coming up on the highway. So uh, let me get this thing set into A mode. There you go. Easy as that. We're in A mode. We're at power level one. We're at traction control level one. We should have all the beans now. We, we have the full unopened can. For y'all that don't know, the Hayabusa is just a cult classic uh, in the motorcycle industry of get on the highway and just go. Uh, obscene speeds with this thing. It's made to be big and comfortable. You know, this thing is unabashedly big. It, it's not trying to be something that it ain't. I don't think anybody, anybody buys a Hayabusa to, you know, do anything but go fast, mostly in a straight line. So I feel like this thing, the highway is where this thing should live. I have very high expectations out of this thing on the highway, especially with as big of a seat as I'm on right now. Man, it's crazy. I do love that I have a gas gauge that actually tells me the miles it's going to take me to to get to E. I hate the bars. Like the bars are always like, I mean, is that 10 miles? Is that 45? Like how many miles I got left before I'm pushing this thing? And this is one motorcycle you do not want to be pushing. Let's get that clear right away. Got a little heat building up on that right leg and foot. Interestingly. Dang, this red light is rough, man. There we go. Now we're going somewhere. This thing surprises the hell out of you when you lean it over. I would never have guessed it would feel like that. <laughs> All right, we're here, finally. Hayabusa on the highway. We're in Mexico with that line. Here we are. Throttling is a little more uh, on-off now that we're actually going a little bit. Let's see what this thing's all about. God! Oh my goodness! Yes! Absolutely! Oh my god, I don't want to be bound that truck at all. Oh my gosh, guys, when you throttle it up and you're in the A mode on the highway in the right gear, you just fly back. Wow, that was incredible. And that was, we're not, we're in third. Back and forth in the lane. It's slow, it's sluggish, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm locked into my position. The wind does not matter to me at all. And it is super comfortable. It has cruise control, right? Let's do that. Let's just put me in cruise control. Wait, is it on? I'd press it again for set. How do you set it? I don't know how to set the cruise control. Oh, I see. Okay. Cruise control button. Set is pushed down. There we go. Yay, we have cruise control. That's awesome. We love that. Bro, I'm... Whew. All right, on the highway. Look at this thing. This thing doesn't even care that I'm here. It's just doing its own thing. Beautiful. We love that. We love that so much. All right, cruise control off. I like the way it feels when you disengage the cruise control. So you guys that are curious about how this thing handles the highway, absolutely gorgeously. I, I can't imagine a better feel on the highway than that. Let's see how it feels on a big turn. What is this motorcycle, dude? What is this? I feel good in that turn. I wanna do that all day. 
truly well i want to go twice the speed but like i would do that turn all day long oh my goodness what is this thing <laughs> all right guys uh let's throw it over to the guys in the camera car and see what those guys think thanks to our uh sponsor cardo guys in the camera car what do you guys think about this hayabusa 2022 suzuki hayabusa uh long standing classic in the motorcycle genre has gotten revitalized it looks great the dash is amazing sure chase is going to go over every single upgrade that they've done to this thing that's new to this year i love this bike it, it looks amazing i would love to throw some saddlebags on it and just kind of zoom across the country for a month or so and test out some of those long desert straights in like nevada or something like that with this bike always been a fan um, always like the, the long, sleek, aerodynamic lines of that motorcycle. I do like that they've flattened out some of the sharp edges on it that they had from the, the last body style. I would love to take it out for a nice, long uh, ride across some big open roads and, uh, and really uh, get a good feeling for what the touring suspension on that thing is really like. But really cool bike. Always liked it. Really like this uh this third iteration of it and uh i'm sure chase is enjoying himself riding it right now too all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much guys in the camera call for your opinions on the hayabusa and more so thank you cardo for supplying us with communications that way we can get camera car footage safely and if you guys want uh a cardo system to communicate with your riding buddies we highly recommend them they are the uh, communicator we use in the shop love them a very long time link in the description down below to get a discount on a cardo unit okay so we know this thing was going to be good on the highway guys right nobody didn't think that that wind buffeting at high speed it looked like that look how wiggly this thing is this is a motorcycle where if you're gonna go fast you're gonna get this bike and go fast so i am surprised at how much buffeting there was but the bigger surprise other than how great it felt on the highway and stable and whatnot was how good this bike feels leaning over we were on the highway you know wiggling the bike around trying to move it in the lane it's a big old thing it took a lot of energy to get that thing moving around when you really lean this bike over they've got the weight set up really well to where it feels extremely comfortable leaning it over and yeah it does take that energy to get it over but it seemed like the bike was just very happy with just falling into the cur into the curves that we were going through, which, you know, that's, that's awesome. I definitely want to see that. I love that. I just didn't expect that out of a bike this big. It's very compliant with like, oh, we're going into this? Cool, let's go into this. Even right here, it, you know, other than the, a little more energy that it takes to get it over, the bike is just compliant, which I I would have not expected that on this thing. City sucks, but highway is not bad. I also noticed that on the highway, my wrists didn't hurt as bad on the highway, I guess because of how dramatically we're leaning forward. That wind helps you keep that weight off your wrists. So it's only the low speed stuff that this bike really suffers with. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to get this thing back in B mode. I do notice the throttle is a little more twitchy in A mode, which you would expect that giving all the power. But something I'm not a huge fan of, and if you guys notice the throttle, look how much initial play there is. And then on top of that initial play, the bike doesn't really start responding in the very beginning, it seems like. So it's a little sluggish to get that power going. Also, that seems a little excessive for an entire uh, tractor trailer for such a tiny little box. Something else is I'm happy with the strong engine braking, but I do want to warn you guys, this bike does seem to have a bit stronger engine braking. I haven't had to use, like when we're at speed, I haven't had to use the brakes that much at all. Uh, I prefer that in a motorcycle, but you guys do need to be careful with that because when you have such strong engine braking, it will throw you forward when you fully let off a throttle, especially if you're, you know, going at a considerable speed. And uh, it makes you have to use the, the brakes less, which is how I prefer to ride. I do think we have engine braking control on this bike, though. Not exactly sure how to get it set up. We're not going to spend the time to figure that out in today's video, but something to look into if you guys are looking into this motorcycle.
that clutch release also i don't know if there's any electronics helping me out with that when i'm letting the clutch out we're just kind of slowly moving into you know going and fully releasing it it is smooth as butter man which supposedly is what something Suzuki really focused on this motorcycle. It's so interesting. You know, we've done a couple of first rides of just really big motorcycles lately. These companies are making these extremely powerful machines ride really smoothly. And it's, it's interesting to see because that can't be an easy job. You know, if you guys go ride one of these, if you have one or if you've ridden with one in the comments, let me know if you were if you guys were as surprised as I am with how much this bike is happy with just leaning into a turn. I would never have thought that. Let's uh, use this opportunity to get on some brakes with nobody behind us. Over this hill, we're going to let on them and see how they feel. Yeah, they take some energy. It'll get you stopped, but I, I really wish I had stronger, uh, stronger brakes. Maybe that's part of their thing. They're trying to make the bike smooth and they have the brakes set up to where they're very progressive. So it's nothing, no quick actions happening. Can we go? We can. This bike, everything feels smooth and controlled and good when you're giving this bike gas. When you're just puttering, this is not one of those bikes that's happy with puttering. Also, I told you guys I would update you. Um, I'm at 5,000 RPMs and my feet and my hands are vibrating quite a bit. You guys might be able to see the mirrors. It's almost hard to see what's coming up behind me though. Mirrors are vibrating so much. Interesting notes and we have rubber on the foot peg. So the fact that I'm feeling all that vibration even with that, it's, it's not great. I think my favorite part of this motorcycle is leaning it over. That's insane. Here, let's, um, let's treat let's treat the bike kind of like I'm chilling around town in C mode now. So guys, one of the other cool things that the Hayabusa does is uh, or that Suzuki did with this Hayabusa. If you guys aren't really familiar, the Hayabusa has just a cult market behind it. Tons of people adding exhausts and turbochargers and superchargers and just making this what is standard a powerful motorcycle into an insane motorcycle. The cool thing that I appreciate Suzuki doing is that they know that, and when they were thinking about the engine, they actually kept two things exactly the same as they are on the previous model. They put the intake and the exhaust ports at the exact same place, and the reason they did that is so that all of the aftermarket that these companies have built up about making the turbochargers, superchargers, exhausts, all of them will bolt on to this motorcycle straight from the get-go. That's cool, but the, the really cool thing that I think uh, is more important about that is that I appreciate a company really focusing and, and looking at what a bike is being used for in the market and then catering future models of that motorcycle to that demographic that buy the motorcycle i i love that i you know yamaha did that with the r7 i feel like suzuki's doing that with the uh hayabusa here and i know i give suzuki uh crap a lot for their motorcycles but when they make modifications like this very user-centered modifications that gets super high rewards in my book another thing now that we're sitting at another red light uh that I have to give Suzuki props for is the fit, the finish, and the feel of this cluster. These buttons feel super premium. I love the feeling I get when I click them. We've got adjustable brake and clutch lever. This area, I think Suzuki is doing an amazing job in. These, these buttons are feeling like triumph level fit and finish and polish. Odometer, 47 miles. How crazy. And that's Oh man, the power of this thing is just incredible, uh, which is, you know, I haven't really talked a ton about the power of this thing, guys, but this bike is one of those few motorcycles. I can think of this one, the H2, I mean, honestly, those are it, that when you are giving this thing power, it just gives it back to you endlessly. You, you almost don't ever feel the bike's power teeter out. This one, you do got to give it revved up. Most of them, you do have to get them revved up. But once you get these uh, bikes revved up, they will just go for days. 
So guys, we're gonna pull into our little parking lot, see if uh, we can get a clean parking lot up here. We'll do a walk around of this big old thing and see what's up. All right, let's see if we can find a parking spot. All right, guys. 2022 Suzuki Hayabusa. So we have the uh, black and bronze model here, but just look how massive this thing is. It is not a tiny motorcycle and please do me the favor of seeing how freaking huge the exhausts are. <laughs> this is so crazy. This bike is so big that it makes the fender eliminator kit not look terrible. We have a grab rail for your passenger, thank God. Look how big the seat is too. Like that's my hand for reference absolutely huge this is not something to mess around with mountain was gonna get in the white the pearl white one with red accents so they basically have a model that's white where this one is black and where this one's bronze it has red accents i think that one actually looks solid i'm not too big of a fan of the black and bronze but i really wish i could have rode that white one because it looks so good that's it man it this bike is all about cutting through the wind look at just the curves that it's got and look how much the fender goes over the front wheel uh, it's kind of crazy guys um, and before we get back on this bike guys we're gonna take a photo for Instagram if you guys aren't following us on Instagram we are at c 2 dubpics we'd love to have you over there this photo will be posted uh, probably by the time you're seeing this so go check this photo out and let me know you came from the first ride video we also post other behind the scenes stuff about what bikes we're riding and you know what other videos we got going on so we'd love to have you guys join we're also trying to make content over on tiktok we're at chase on two wheels over there if you guys are on those social media platforms we would love for you to join the group let's finish this video up check out the easy start all right so we turn it on and then that's awesome that actually caught me off guard when i first cranked the bike up you just clicked on that easy start and the bike does all of it for you. You don't got to hold the start button. All right, guys. So uh, as we end this uh, first ride of the 2022 Suzuki Hayabusa, let's, uh, let's round this stuff up. Immensely powerful, good rider modes, right? It's uh, shifting between rider modes and it's a big shift in between. Amazing on the highway. Love every single thing about this thing on the highway. A little bit of buffeting when you're going, you know, those extreme speeds. Downtown, you know, or at low speeds, it's a lot to manage. I mean, it's a lot to manage at any speed, but the level of stability you get on the highway is phenomenal. Controls feel great. Tack and uh, the control cluster up front. Suzuki did a phenomenal job with that as well as the buttons. Overall, I'm really impressed with this thing. I, I remember the 2015 Hayabusa that I rode. I did not like that bike. I gave it a lot of crap. Having ridden this bike, I can totally see the person that would buy this. And I can think of a couple people. This is a motorcycle that you could literally start today and go across country with and be totally fine. There's a lot of space on the tank to get your arm rested up. I think you can get yourself in a very comfortable body position on this bike, which means it, it, that mixed with how big the bike is, you're not gonna be blown around. If you could get some side bags on this thing, this would be a phenomenal touring bike. You've got cruise control. You've got an engine that can go 80 miles an hour without even sweating, like not even kind of sweating. So for a more sporty touring bike, I mean, granted, you're going to be leaned over a lot, but I feel like that body position would be more comfortable if you're leaning up on the tank. I feel like this bike would do amazingly as a touring bike. Secondly, if you are one of those guys that's looking for a motorcycle to get on the highway and just do obscene things, or if you're all about making just the fastest bike you can from a launch you know this bike's got uh launch control we will not be testing that between launch control and all of the aftermarket that exists for this bike and the previous model that's bolt on to this i think for the the customizer the drag racer this is a phenomenal motorcycle and and honestly those are the two people that i feel like would would benefit the most from this bike is long-term highway use or extremely fast highway use that's where it works well We're here on city streets it's heavy it's slow it takes a lot of energy i do find myself getting more tired riding this thing around the city so you guys are gonna have to keep that in mind if you fit into those two brackets i don't think they make many better motorcycles for for those two user cases 
honestly so guys that's gonna be it for me I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out maybe on a bike purchase decision uh, if it did make sure to hit that like button before we get out of here I do got to give a shout out to my guys over at Mountain Motorsports that's the dealership I started it and that's the dealership that hooks me up to let me ride their motorcycle so I can tell you guys what they're all about if you guys want to find some information on Mountain Motorsports we'll have a link for them in the description down below they're a massive dealer they got like five or six locations up here in North Georgia so they also have a massive inventory so if you guys want to sit on a motorcycle or try a few out they are the place to go to uh, without them wouldn't be able to do first ride so you guys make sure to go give them some love and if you tell them uh, you're looking for a motorcycle and you came from a chase on two wheels video you can get a discount so you guys make sure to take advantage of that if you're in the market for your next bike guys i've been chasing on two wheels i really appreciate you riding around with me and uh, we'll see you guys on the next first ride later outro crew what's going on fam if this is your first time on the outro crew that means you made it to the end of the video hence outro crew uh so i need you guys to do two things one you just watched an entire video so you probably enjoyed it i would appreciate a like button but i know my outro crew fam got me you guys make sure to hit that like button secondly let me know in the comments guys are you guys as surprised as i am with how much this bike just falls into turns like not only does it fall into the turns but it gives you that feeling of like oh you're giving me what i want keep doing that i would have never thought this bike would have felt like that but i am super happy it uh it did and let me know if you guys have seen my old hayabusa video where i just trashed on it kind of interesting to see where i was then and where i am now anyways guys i appreciate you getting to the end of the video that makes uh that makes me love you guys just a little bit longer I will see y'all on the next one. Later!